Okay, hi there. Uh, we're going to take a, a few minutes to work through an essay plan on the issue of the impact of labour migration into a country and the consequences for a nation's labour market. Here's the question. Assess the view that high rates of net migration can help increase employment and reduce unemployment in an economy. 25 marker. So we're looking to build two main analysis points, supporting with a diagram and then two evaluation arguments, and also try to come to a reasoned conclusion at the end, particularly if we can use a bit of context to help the answer. In the case of the UK, we see here that uh, immigration, shown by the blue line, has been rising, of course, over the last uh, 20, 30 years, uh, peaking at just over 600,000 people per year coming in in 2015. Equally, more people leave each year. That figure is now at or around 400,000. So the grey histogram in the middle shows net migration, the balance between immigration and emigration. If we put the uh, cursor here, we can see that um, immigration in net terms peaked about 343,000 in the UK in 2015. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's now down to about 226,000 as of 2019. Although the data is quite hard to, to measure accurately. So we're looking to build analysis and evaluation in an essay and then come to a reasoned conclusion. The, uh, the view is that migration is good for both employment and unemployment. So there's a nice easy connection there. We can split the essay up into an employment question, employment paragraph and an unemployment paragraph. Here's my first KA point. I'm going to make the case that migration can increase employment in the economy. Migrants often take jobs that might not be filled by people in the domestic home population. For example, cleaners, care workers, construction workers. And inward migration helps to alleviate or reduce skills shortages and therefore gives greater latitude for growing businesses to employ more people, which increases employment. So the point here is that migration is a way of, of relieving the constraint of skill shortages, which could be holding businesses back. It helps businesses to avoid the skill shortages and employ more people. And then developing the point using the circular flow model, hope you're familiar with that, increased employment generates increased factor incomes, wages and salaries and bonuses, etc., which leads to high consumer spending, which then increases aggregate demand, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. And since the demand for labour is a derived demand, uh, therefore an increase in AD, uh, it helped where inward migration will, will tend to lift total employment. So the argument is uh, that you know, 250,000 people coming in per year, in theory, is going to increase the total size of the working population, increase the employment rate, and uh, through the circular flow model, drive higher demand for goods and services across the economy, which will lift total employment. I'll come back to the diagram you might want to use on that in a second. Well, evaluate the point, however... The positive effect on employment, explained in the previous paragraph, might be offset, offsetting factor, if migrant workers end up taking jobs that might have gone to people in their own domestic labour market. This really depends on whether migrant workers are seen as substitutes to domestic workers, rather than perhaps complementary to the existing labour force. So, for example, uh, you might have, a, a, for sake of argument, you might have a, an au pair that comes in or a care worker that comes in from another country. And if they're complementary, that might allow more women with children to go out to work, for example. Uh, or maybe a, a care worker comes in from overseas and that uh, reduces the need for somebody to stay at home to look after an elderly relative. And again, that increases their employment potential. So really the key thing here is about whether migrants are substitutes, they bring substitute skills in, or whether they're complementary to the existing labour force. And it also depends on whether migrants have a lower reservation wage that's the kind of minimum wage they're prepared to work for, for certain types of jobs, including in things like farming, fruit picking and tourism and hospitality. So I'm really su suggesting that the impact on employment might be mitigated by whether the migrants are substitutes or complements to people already in the labour market. My second KAA point is going to focus on whether inward migration reduces unemployment. Slightly counterintuitive to some people, that if the mig if migrant labour force increases, uh, then you know there's only so many jobs around. It's sometimes called the fallacy of composition. 
Well, a high rate of inward migration can reduce unemployment by stimulating demand, uh, increased real incomes in the circular flow, which we could have hinted at in the uh, in the first paragraph. But also, crucially, if migrants are in work, they're going to be paying their taxes, income tax, national insurance and VAT. So there may be a higher government spending financed by higher tax revenues and possibly a rise in exports from new startups set up by migrant entrepreneurs. Many migrants who come into the UK, for example, <clears throat> pardon me, set up their own businesses and therefore act as a kind of seed corn a set base for export potential. So migration also helps to cause an outward shift in aggregate supply, which encourages a faster rate of non-inflationary growth for the economy. Again, good for reducing unemployment. However, interesting how many evaluation paragraphs start with however. A higher migration might have the effect of driving real wages down for a percentage of the labour force. So if you get an influx of workers, perhaps the real wage goes down. And this might negatively affect on people's work incentives. It could also, in theory, reduce real disposable incomes for some people, which then lowers demand, risking higher levels of unemployment. Uh, I'm going to put an analysis diagram in. My analysis diagram shows how a large outward shift in labour supply might have the effect of reducing real wages, especially in those kind of occupations, those jobs where employers, businesses have monopsony power in setting wages and other conditions of employment. Now, this isn't a perfect answer, but I'm trying to address the question. My first point is about increased employment. My second point is about lowering unemployment. But in both cases, I'm trying to challenge uh, and thinking think of some offsetting or it depends on factors. For the final reason comment, uh, it doesn't have to be long for my exam board. Uh, you know, you just have to build good evaluation. So on balance overall, uh, the impact of migration on jobs depends on. And then you talk about, for example, uh, the extent to which migrants offer complementary or substitute skills. Depends on uh, whether migrants are coming in on a temporary or permanent basis. Depends on the employment rate of migrants. Do they find work when they come in? You could use some evidence. The evidence for the UK suggests that on balance, the impact is either positive or negative. It really does help to bring in context into your answer. What kind of analysis diagrams could you develop? Well, you could use an ADS framework. You could, for example, say, I'm just going to do a bit of work on this diagram. You could say that an increase in uh, migration increases aggregate demand, in which case you could end up with a higher level of demand here shown by AD2, in which case uh, the level of aggregate Demand goes up, the equilibrium level of GDP goes up, and that should, in theory, allow a higher level of uh, national output. Why one could go to YP, Y2, for example. Put this in. So it could be the case that uh, national output could increase to Y2 because there's more the size of the population has gone up. There's an increase in, in the size of the uh, economy. But, of course, in theory, that could also cause a rise in inflation. It could cause the price level to rise. And that would be a risk of high levels of migration if uh, that's the case. So there could be a th there could be a risk of higher inflation uh, if there's a very high level of migration. However, of course, you that would then say, well, what about the impact on the supply side of the economy? It could be the case that if migrants come in, particularly if they're willing and able to work at low wages, or perhaps if they're higher productivity workers, then aggregate supply might shift out to the right. So you might get an influx of people willing to work in the care sector or construction or farming. And as a result, the equilibrium actually might be even higher. There could be a high level of growth and employment without the risk of inflation. I haven't shifted long on aggregate supply. I could do it, but that would make the diagram extremely complicated to, to draw. But here I'm showing that uh, there could be an increase in national income, in real national income, without necessarily causing inflation because migration leads to an increase in both aggregate demand and also aggregate supply. But I mean, you build build an analysis diagram uh, to, to make the point you're trying to make. An alternative uh, is to think about a labour market diagram. The beauty about a labour market diagram, which you may well be familiar with, is that it have, has employment on the x-axis, employment of labour. So we think in aggregate about the demand for labour from employers and the aggregate supply of labour. What impact would migration have? Well, in theory, uh, a, a substantial and persistent increase in migration would lead to a big outward shift in the supply of labour. Let's call it uh, let's call it AS2. So if migration occurs, then the aggregate supply of labour goes up. 
So we can shift the aggregate labor supply out. Now again, in theory, this could, it's good news for employment, employment goes up, but it could depress the real wages of people uh, in other in, in the economy. So real wages might, might be depressed, which would have consequences for people's spending power and in an aggregate demand sense. Uh, but it certainly would be good news for employment. So we can find an equilibrium employment there. Call it E2. Don't forget when you're drawing diagrams in the exam, always draw to the axes, label uh, label your diagrams, ace your diagrams. Okay, so employment um, goes there. I'll just make it a little neater. A lot of, a lot of uh, students now do author in PowerPoint on their iPads and things when they're writing essays. So that would suggest that an increase in migration could have a depressive effect on real wages. Good for employment, more people in work, but actually real wages fall and that could dampen the impact on demand. But of course, you could then develop the diagram. And of course, developing the diagram takes you to a higher level of analysis. You could say, well, those migrants who come in create new jobs. They create jobs in, in all kinds of areas, local areas that where migrants settle. And it could well be the case that aggregate demand for labour increases if the economy can sustain a higher growth rate because of migration coming in, then the level of demand goes up, in which case real wages won't be depressed as much. They might fall a little bit, uh, but but employment rises still further. All of this links back to the question, what's the impact of migrate, uh, migrancy flows on employment and unemployment? And as long as you're linking back to the question, thinking about the consequences for real wages, uh, and jobs and unemployment, then you're answering the question, which is the important part, isn't it? I'm going to just finish this diagram off for you before we look at some evidence. Key thing here is to let the diagram do the talking for you. A developed diagram is going to score high marks. Don't just draw supply and demand. Shift the curves. Try and explain a story based on what you think the argument needs to be. It's important, I think, to get an A star. Always important to know your stuff, to know what's going on in the economy, to have a feel for some of the data. So to have a feel, for example, about the scale of migration. Uh, this data shows employment rates in the UK, a percentage of people of working age who have a job. Follow the blue line, that's UK nationals. And you can see here that from 2010 onwards, employment, as we came out of the last recession, employment rate has risen from 71% to 77 percent at a time when migration into the economy has been quite high the employment rate of uk nationals has gone up suggesting that higher rates of migration are not damaging employment rates also worth looking at the orange line here the employment rate amongst eu nationals coming into the uk to live and work is much higher the vast majority of eu nationals come to the uk to work uh, and uh, that figure is rising, as also is, although it's lower, the employment rate of non-EU nationals. Uh, the, the employment rate overall, uh, taking away the nationality side, again, that's been rising. There was a fall here in a recession. There was the recession in 2008. But employment's been rising, uh, and in fact, it's been rising quite strongly for women. The gap between men and women has been closing. Uh, the unemployment rate has been falling. So again, if you were to say in an essay, look, in the last 10 years, we've had substantial net inward migration, and yet the unemployment rate has fallen from 10% to around 4%, although it's now rising. That is substantial evidence that migrancy, migrant flows coming in doesn't necessarily lead to higher un unemployment. Although many factors, of course, affect unemployment, not just migrant flows. Are, are real wages falling? Are, are people suffering deep cuts in real pay? Well, the evidence here suggests that for quite a few years, the growth of real pay, this is the zero line here, the growth of real pay, which is shown here in blue and regular pay, has been actually pretty flat, it hasn't been rising very quickly, maybe one, possibly two percent at times, but actually for most people, their real pay has been fairly flat. A bit of evidence, perhaps, that high levels of inward migration have dampened real pay. And one last bit of evidence you might put a big in, which is the idea of the cost of renting a home or buying a home. This chart shows the cost of renting a house in London. And you can see that in for, for, most, for most types of property, from a basic room to a studio all the way through to three or four bedrooms, the cost has risen quite substantially. If you look at the median, uh, the median for two bedrooms is now £1,450 um, a, a month.
So you can make a case for saying, for example, that high rates of migration might drive up the demand for housing and property, which increases the cost of renting, and that can have consequences for people's spending power and for jobs and unemployment. Either way, the key in an essay such as this, we've gone into it in quite a bit of detail, is to build two evaluation po uh, two analysis points, build two evaluation points, have them in separate paragraphs, use an analysis diagram when you can, and if you have the evidence, uh, don't be afraid to use it in an essay. Okay, thank you very much indeed.